Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Yes. In fact, right now I'm talking to you. Some people are still sending me DM saying, please, the YouTube link. I'm going to say something about that. You know, this TLIC has been interesting. So I'm not going to, let me not say otherwise. It's been interesting. Interesting in the sense that uh, yesterday's network, what happened with the Oh, Zoom thing, logging out. Well, sorry with my experience. It maybe just once today, maybe once. But then we would have gone uh, far enough in the class of today. So I just want to assure you, by God's grace, we will make this thing available for you so that you can still participate. And I know some people also reached out to me that they couldn't join. Okay, so our speaker is on the call. I speak for, for today. So some people also reached out that they could not download Zoom on their phone. You know, I was trying to use another app called Free Conference Call, but I just realized that that app, some of you might not be familiar with it in terms, so you need to download it. It's easier than Zoom, in my opinion. Free Conference Call is an app that is easier than Zoom. So maybe going forward, we might explore it and see how it is. Uh, but for today's class, um, we we'll just need to go on. So I'm going to read the profile of a speaker for today. You know, um, but in the meantime, yes, Joseph, good to have you as well. You're ready. I'm also ready for all of you. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. We are ready. And our speaker today is someone that is also ready. He was born ready. He was born ready. So I'm going to read his profile shortly. And um, I believe we can kickstart after. So uh, his name is Benga Samuel. He's a leadership coach, speaker and author with particular interest in helping emerging leaders hone their leadership skills and thus become more effective leaders. As a certified John Maxwell trainer, um, and leadership coach, he organizes a number of John Maxwell leadership certification courses for corporate organizations, including developing the leader within you, 15 laws of growth and intentional living. Participants often describe the sessions with him as practical and interesting. He also serves as the country coordinator for the John Maxwell Leadership Foundation. You see, you are in for something big this evening. In Nigeria, he oversees the uh, overseeing the Beyond Success program. In line with his passion for teaching and mentoring teenagers, Benga Samuel is the founder of Teens Impact, a teenage-based organization with the vision of equipping teenagers to fulfilling their potential. He has over 15 years. I know some people are like 15 years old on this call. So he's got over 15 years experience in youth work. He has authored several books for young people in addition to devotionals. He continues engaging teenagers through various engaging and impactful programs like Boy Code, Girl Code, Leading from the Lockers, I Choose Leadership Values Program, Alpha, Alpha ETC. As a John Maxwell Code, it teaches leadership in school using the John Maxwell I Choose curriculum. Benga is also an active member of the third community. I'm going to be bringing him up now any moment from now but i just want to state that i have known him for quite some time and i can tell you this evening you're going to have practical steps please i want you to keep the class as engaging as possible because he he likes he likes feedback so i'm sure um you you will enjoy the class so at this moment i'm going to uh on YouTube. So sorry, my video has been off. Apologies. So you've not been seeing my face since. Oh, but don't worry. There's still a lot of my faces. That, I mean, a lot of my face that you see. So this time, let me um, unmute him so he could um, speak. So over to you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. 
I'm glad to share my evening with all the leaders uh, on the call this evening. Uh, I, I would like to know who is on the call. Um, I don't know if we mind to, if, you, if it will be a bother for you to tell me how old you are. I want to know, <laughs> I want to have an idea of those on the call this evening. If, if I, I want to know what age group I'm speaking with or how old you are, and that, that will determine the examples I would give. But if, if it's a bother for you, just tell me your name and where you're joining from. If, if you don't want to share your age, that's okay. But just tell me, at least tell me your name in the chat box. I want to know that, yeah, with me, I, I want to be sure you're not watching a Netflix movie. You know, I've been, <laughs> I know it's, it's still holiday time and uh, you may be catching up uh, or you might be on your PS4, PS5, come on. And <laughs> yeah, not really with us. So I want to be sure you're here. Yeah, Simisola, I see you from Lagos. Thank you, Simisola. Uh, yeah, keep it coming. I, I want to know who's on the call. Uh, where are you joining from? Yeah, join. Oh, thank you, Ismail. Ismail is 17. Okay, good. Uh, your Miko Ismail. I'm not sure which one is your son name, but thank you. Joseph from Agege. Thank you. Uh, Faith is 14 years. Okay, okay. Gives me an idea. Um, thank you. Keep it coming. Where in Lagos are you joining from? Are you in Abuleg? But some of you don't know where that is, but it's in Lagos. <laughs> or <laughs> are you in... Wow, Lucy from Joss. Wow, wow, all the way in Joss. Uh, I saw someone from Ikoyi. I saw someone in 16 years. All oh, the messages are running very fast. Uh, someone from Ilori is 13 years. Oh, okay. Same Salah knows where uh, Ablek Bai is. I smile is Ayomikun is from Bariga. Fantastic, fantastic. Good to see. Uh, Faith from Kaduna. Wow, 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 wow. This room is full of... Uh, leaders, someone is from Lagos, uh, Thomas from Lagos Command, uh, what from different parts. Okay, uh, I see another person from Kaduna who is 13 years, Michelle from Porta Court. Wow, 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 wow. This, this is a full Nigeria room. We're all from different parts of the country, and this, this is so good. Um, fantastic, fantastic. Just looking at Latifa from Surule. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you for introducing yourselves. Uh, fantastic. I just waited one more minute. Um, and while I'm still waiting for anyone who has, is here to introduce themselves, I want to say thank you um, to the Leadership, Intelligence, and uh, Business uh, Academy for the opportunity to share this time with you. Today, we're talking about community engagement and social responsibility. Uh, but I've tagged it salt and light, uh, but essentially that's what we're going to be speaking about. How can you be socially responsible and how can you add value to people around you? Opa Wale from Bariga, I see you. I see you. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. It's not, I'm not going to be in your face for long. I'm only going to speak for 30 minutes and that 30 minutes is counting down now. And then I would <clears throat> take your questions and just listen to you, share with me. Uh, but it will be very interactive. Uh, I would ask for your contributions. I would ask you to share with me uh, whatever you're learning. All right. Thank you for all the introductions. Uh, if you can kindly enable me to share my screen uh, so that I can put up my slides. Uh, so I live in Lagos. I live in the city of Lagos. Uh, I was born, I, I like to tell uh, participants at the workshop that I was born, I like to brag about it, that I, I was not born in Nigeria. Uh, can anyone guess where I was born? <laughs> I, I wasn't born in Lagos, I wasn't born in Abuja, I wasn't born in Nigeria. Ah, Faith says I was born in the UK. Uh, Thomas says Ghana. Ah, somebody says I was born in Togo. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you the answer until the end. Any other person wants to guess, where was I born? Ah, Joseph says I was born in America. Ah, ah. Simi says Kenya. Wow. <laughs> Canada. Interesting. London. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you. Let me save you. Let me not stress you. <laughs> so I was born in a city called Duisburg in Germany. Uh, my dad at the time was... Uh, serving as a doctor in, in Germany, and that's where I was born. 
but I'm not happy with my dad because less than one month after he brought me, he deported me back to Nigeria. So the only thing I have is that I, I have a German birth certificate that I cannot use for anything. It's of no use to me. Uh, but I just like to still say that I was just mentioned for the purpose of bragging that I was born. At least I was born in Duisburg. I've never gone back to Germany. It's so interesting. Uh, I should go back and find out what, what happens in Germany. Okay, I think I can put up my screen now. I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, so here's my first question. Okay, good. Here's my first question as we start our conversations. There are four animals here on the screen. Uh, you have the parrot, you have the ant, you have the dog, and you have the lion. In your own opinion, I want you to tell me if you were going to appoint a leader uh, out of these four animals, which of the animals would you appoint as your leader? You could only pick one. You could only pick one animal. You can't pick two. Which one would you appoint as your leader? Okay, mm, the answers are coming very fast. Let me go to the chat room. Who would you pick as your leader if you could only pick one? You could only vote for one, okay? Ipec Trinity says lion, Thomas says ants, Joseph says lion. Ah, Fit says lion, obviously, obviously. Yes. Why, why are we even talking about it, lion? <laughs> okay, keep it coming, ant, ant, lion. Ah, okay. Uh, Samson says ants have a good sense of unity. Okay, all right. So I, I want to activate the mics. Uh, I'm assuming that participants. Okay, if you want to tell me why you picked that, whatever animal you picked, if you put up your digital hand, uh, your mic will be activated and you'll be able to speak. But I want to hear you talk to me. Which animal did you pick and why did you pick that animal? Why are you voting for that animal? So just if you put up your hand. Um, your mic will be activated, you'll be able to speak. So who wants to speak first? If you look at reactions on your screen, you see the option to put up your digital hand. And if you can't find it, just tell me in the chat box that you want to share, speak. And uh, yeah, we'll give you an opportunity to speak. So which animal did you pick and why? I want to know your why. Why did you pick that animal? Anyone wants to share with us? Okay, it's Mayo Ayomikun's hand is up. Uh, can we activate his mic to speak? Thank you. So is my Ayomiku, is your mic on now? Fits, I can see your hand also. Can you just confirm to me if participants are able to turn on their mic themselves or if you, uh, if the administrator needs to activate it? Okay, Trinity's hand is also up. Um, I'm just waiting for the administrator to activate, to be able to activate those mics. Okay, so while while I'm waiting for that, um, and you could also make me a co-host. If I'm co-host, I'm also able to do, make that happen. All right, so while, while, I'm, while we're waiting for that, you could actually share with me in the chat box, uh, why did you pick whatever animal that you picked? What, why did you make that the option? I, I already saw someone say, um, talk, talk about the fact that ants have a sense of unity. And I like that. Uh, I like the fact that you're able to identify that uh, ants have a sense of unity. Um, okay, so here now that I'm the host. So let's see, can I activate? Okay, Fate, you should be able to speak now, Fate. Please go ahead. So, thank you, sir. I didn't like uh, the real leaders because they have uh, a lot 
have done in my research. It would have been easier to make elephants or rhinos the king of the jungle, but rhinos already know that they are the leader, and some of the other animals just go along with it. They have an animal that they just cannot compete with. All right, thank you, Faith. Uh, I wasn't very clear, but I, I knew you were uh, talking about the lion. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's go to Gibek Trinity. So let me, yes, please unmute your mic. Hello. Hello. How are you this Hi. evening? Hi. Loud and clear. I can hear you. I choose lion because he's the king of the jungle and every animal fears him. And it is fearless. <laughs> and it is fearless. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, let me see who else has their hand up. Uh, but there are lots of comments in the chat box. So let me let me dive into the chat box and read those comments there. Um, Michelle Donald says, because the lion is brave. Uh, Ismail Ayomikun says, because the lion is bold and a brave animal. Uh, Trinity just spoke to us. Joseph says, the lion, because they are brave and what differentiates them from other animals is attitude. They are fearless too, okay? Ajibola Gospel says, because a lion thinks about others before himself, they are brave. Interesting. Um, Thomas says ants work together in group. They uh, disseminate duties for each group. Okay. Lion is a brave animal. RJ Tony. Uh, okay. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone that shared with me in the chat box and those of you that also uh, put on your mic to speak to me. And you see, there's no wrong or right answer. All the answers are correct. If you pick the ant, you're right. If you pick the lion, you're right. Uh, nobody picked the parrot, maybe because the parrot talks too much. So you think that the, the, the parrot is not a good leader. <laughs> okay, I see a very long message. I'm going to read it quickly. Uh, ants are organizational in nature. Even when their supply line is disrupted, they go back to the line. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. But that doesn't mean the ant isn't brave and bold yeah joseph says parrots talk too much so anyway any of the animals you picked the good thing is that we can identify a leadership characteristics from all those animals um you know i've been in a class before and i gave this example and somebody uh, actually said what of the rats i'm like rats do rats have any leadership quality <laughs> and that day I got to find out that the person picked a rat because they feel, the person felt that rats are resilient. Hmm. Have you ever struggled with a rat before? Has a rat come into your house before? Hmm. You are in trouble. You will see Pepe because, <laughs> because you, you, you will try to kill the rat and the rat would not will refuse to die. Yes. <laughs> so the person mentioned that rats are truly, truly resilient. And that's, that's a leadership characteristic that we can learn from them. Interesting. Um, so today, let's move on. As we talk about, as we have a conversation around uh, being socially responsible and um, engaging in uh, various community development projects, I, I wanted us to think about how that uh, influences what we do. Can you, can you see my slides? Can you see my screen? Can you see a picture of my slides? Oh, good, good. Okay, so I wanted to start off by sharing this picture with you. So um, I'm in this picture, by the way, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to allow you to laugh at me. So I would not tell you where I am in this picture. And I know that right now you're trying to guess, but I, I'm praying for you that you will not find me. Anyway, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in this picture, and this is a picture of um, my secondary school. So I attended a school uh, here in Lagos in the first three years, between GSS 1 and GSS 3, what some of you may refer to as year 7 to year 9. Uh, 
our school was based in Marina. Uh, if you've ever, I mean, driven through a coal bridge, there's the popular Cathedral Church of Christ. It's it used to be white. I think now it's it painted it like gray. But anyway, it's you can't miss it. It's probably the most iconic church building in the Lagos Island area. So it's called Cathedral Church of Christ. My school used to be directly behind that uh, church. And every Sunday we would go, um, well, not every Sunday, some Sundays we'd worship in our school. Other Sundays we would go to Cathedral Church uh, because our school uh, is owned by the Anglican Church. Anyway, first three years we were right there in Marina. The final three years we, uh, we moved to Ikorodu, uh, I mean, somewhere very far, 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 border town in Lagos. And that's where we were in a, stuck in a village there for our final years. Anyway, we were first set. I was part of the first set of students in that school. What it meant was that I had no seniors. Ooh, so happy. No senior. I was senior from Genesis 1 to my final year. Nobody could punish me. I, I had no senior to tell me to go and buy him gala and, and drink. I was senior all my days in secondary school. But what happened also was that in our second year in school, uh, which is GSS2, we were made prefects. And for me, uh, anytime I think about my leadership journey, I trace it back to secondary school because my time in secondary school gave me an opportunity to start learning about taking responsibility. I was chapel prefect. And so I was responsible for setting up the assembly. I was about 11, 12 years at, in GS2. And to just think about yourself now, some of you are 13, some of you are 14, maybe some of you are even between 11 and 12. And so at that age, I was responsible for, it was a Christian school, so every, weekday would have an assembly where a student would read the bible now that student had to have rehearsed with the chapel prefect a day before okay so students who come to me would prepare together I'll make sure the student to read is ready for the assembly i would also set up the assembly ground the sound system and all of that i was in charge of sunday service every sunday evening we'll have a fellowship i have to either teach or appoint somebody to teach. I organize the program. I will write the program for a Sunday service. So pretty much I, I've had a long, so when, when he was reading my introduction and said, oh, I have 15 years, actually it's more than 15 years because if you count my time in secondary school, that will be an additional six years of practice. So why do I share this story? I share the story because I want you to know that you are not too young to start your leadership journey. You're not too young to start um, learning. You're not too young to even start making a difference uh, where you are. In case you're still trying to find me, I'm right in front, I'm the third guy, very tall, I'm very tall here. I'm sure you can see the third guy right in front. So you're not too young to make a difference. And so today I want to touch on what I've called salt and light, salt and light. And these are, very, these are two very important things in our everyday life. So um, no matter what the kind of food you like, no matter what your best food is, if it's cooked without salt, you may not enjoy it. Some of you like fried rice, some of you like uh, chicken and chips, some of you like burger, whatever it is you like, uh, that meal is lovely to enjoy because it has some uh, part of salt in it. Okay, and that's why you enjoy it. Also, wherever you live, you part of why you enjoy your home is that you have power, you have light. Some of you enjoy light to either the uh, supply from EKDC or whatever your provider is. And then some of you depend on generators. Some of you have solar powered inverters in your home. We all are happy when there's power. It makes a difference for it helps us to do a lot of basic things that we want to do and when we don't have light we're not happy so salt and light are two very important things and my conversation today is to let you know that you are salt and you are light and you can make a difference wherever you find yourself i i, I love this particular word from 
uh, the message translation, Matthew 5, 16. Uh, it says that you are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. I mean, it goes on to verse 16, but I just want to emphasize this particular verse that says you are here to be light. And I want you to tell me in the chat box, just say, I am light. Just type that out. I am light. I am light. I am light. I am light. I want to see, I want to see a hundred. I am light in the chat box. Just type it out. I am light. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Ajibola. Thank you, Faith. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Keep typing it. I am light. I, I, that's the first thing I want you to go home with today. That knowledge that you are salt and you are light. And, and the same way salt and light as it's very important for our everyday life. You are so essential, um, not just for yourself, not just to add value to your family, but also to add value to your community. Remember our conversation today is centered around how can you be more socially responsible and how can you get involved in uh, community engagement? Fantastic. You guys are listening. You guys are so attentive. Just to let you know that this meeting will time out in about eight minutes, uh, but all you need to do is to log back in uh, and we'll continue the session. So you are light. You're here to make a difference and you're here to bring out the God colors in the world. In fact, God is depending on you to be able to bring out the God colors around the world. Okay, God is not going to come down himself. He's depending on you to be light and to be salt. And what does that mean? Uh, today, I will just share with you three big thoughts um, of things that I think you need to focus on uh, in order to be sold and in order to be light. And my first big thought is start by leading yourself. If you're going to be sold and if you're going to be light, if you're going to bring transformation to your world, then the first place you need to start from is by leading yourself. Okay, I, I love the story of a man who said that he wanted to change the world. That was his dream. He wanted to change the entire world. And by the time he was old, he realized that he had not changed the world. He had not uh, fulfilled his dream of changing the world. And he wasn't happy with himself. And then he, he wanted to find out why, why didn't I fulfill this dream I had of changing the world? So he said, you know what, if I had just focused on changing myself at the beginning, maybe I would have been able to change my world. So I want you to start with yourself. As you think about transforming your society, transforming your environment, uh, becoming a social impact, a change maker, the first place you need truly need to start from is yourself. Because you truly cannot give to others what you don't have. So think about it. If you want to, if you're unhappy with how dirty everywhere is in your community or where you live or in your environment, and you're thinking about uh, how can I create initiatives to uh, clean up the dirty streets? That's a very laudable initiative. But then my question for you would be, drum rolls, how clean is your room? That would be my question. That, that's, that's the first thing I would ask you. What have you done for yourself? What have you done to clean up your home before you think about changing the society? So when we think about social change, I want us to think first about ourselves and our immediate environment. Your first immediate environment will be your home, where you live, okay? So if you're not already being salt and light where you live, then just stop talking about how you want to change the world. Your starting place, you def when you talk about the world, your first world is your home. And that's where I want you to start making a change. How can you make a change? Some of you are, uh, I mean, you're the firstborn or you have siblings, you're the secondborn, or even you're the last child at home. How can you make a difference in your home? What can you do to start making a change at home? How can you start helping? How can you become more responsible at home? And how can that translate to creating a social change? How can you help your parents more? You know, my I have two sons. Uh, one is 10 and the other is seven. And when my son was 10, when he clocked 10 in April, he had been asking me to buy him a dog in the last one year. 
And so I said to him, if you get A grade in school, if at the end of the session, your overall grade is A, I'll buy you a dog. And so last year he achieved that target and I was struggling with buying him the dog, not because I didn't want to spend the money, but uh, the conversation was around, uh, okay, I was just looking at one of the messages there. We're just afraid that if we buy the dog, would he be able to take care of the dog? Because yes, it's cute to have a dog, but it comes with a lot of responsibility. He has to uh, take the dog. Now, this is a parlor dog, a very small dog. He has to take the dog out to wee. He has to clean up after the dog. He has to make sure the dog has eaten. So there's a lot to do. And I wanted him to be ready for that responsibility. And so I, anyway, we got the dog for him in April and he's doing very well because he's been he's been able to show responsibility in taking care of the dog. And that's what I'm talking about. Start where you are. Start by leading yourself, taking responsibility for yourself, making a difference at home. So let me ask you, what, what is it that you can start doing at home to make a difference? How can you become more useful at home? I want you to tell me in the chat box, how, how can you become more useful at home? What, what can you start doing to become more useful at home? Uh-huh, okay. Simisola says, start with the chores. Good, good, good. Keep it coming. How can you become, how can you make a change at home? How can you be salt and light at home? Help my parents, yes, but... I want you to break that down. What does that mean? What do you want to help them with? How can you become more useful at home? How can you be salt and light at home? All right, keep your answers coming. I, I want you to share with me what are the things you can start doing to make a difference at home, helping them by obeying them and doing what they say. Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle Donald. Um, grab all the jobs. Okay, that ran very fast. By bringing solutions to every problem at home, be this problem solver. I love this. Be the problem solver, not the problem giver. <laughs> oh, that's so that's nice. That's so nice. That's, that's, those are words in the Bible. Be the problem solver, not the... In fact, if you're not even doing anything at home, by not just bringing problem, that is something. <laughs> okay, uh, Ismail uh, Ayomiko, teaching my siblings the right way to behave good, helping take care of the house when you can, and also taking care of your parents, absolutely. You know, your parents deserve to be taken care of, so make sure you're taking care of them. Um I love this comment. Uh, let's see. Be the reason why your parents are happy. Oh, my God. That is so sweet. Be the reason. Just do something to make them happy. Do something to make them happy. You're making a change already. You're making a change at home by doing something to make them happy. Oh, I, I love the comments. Uh, by helping them out. Let me see which comment have I not read. By being useful at home. Helping by taking care of the hubs when you can. Okay, okay. Keep it coming. Um, and these are very good reasons uh, and things that we can actually start doing to make the difference at home. Let me move to my second big thought. And the meeting with time out whilst I'm speaking about that. Don't worry, log in back. And when you log in back, I want to show you a video that we'll all watch together and then we'll talk about it. My second big thought about um, community engagement and being socially responsible is for you to recognize opportunities to solve problems. Recognize opportunities to solve problems. I want to read you a quote from uh, Mother Teresa. She says that I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast the stone across the waters to create many ripples. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast the stone among the waters to create many ripples. So second thing I want you to be able to do is look for opportunities to solve problems. And those opportunities will come from whether the home 
or your school or your immediate environment, or you need to keep identifying what are the problems that I can do something about. Okay, so I'll just stop speaking so you don't miss anything I'm saying. Uh, I'll allow the meeting time out now. Wait, Nasimu, I don't go by. Everybody, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? That's also our age and our. I told him I. All right, welcome back. Um, still have a few people uh, that are not yet back. Okay, I'll just do a quick recap. Um, also, I wait for others to join us. So we're talking about being salt and light. Uh, and I've shared with you, I'm sharing with you this evening on three big thoughts uh, on that. My first big thought is that you need to start by leading yourself start by leading yourself start by being salt and light at home that's the starting place you don't want to be a champion out of the house but you're trouble at home okay i don't want that i want you to be light at home and as you shine your light at home by helping out by being useful at home and somebody shared something with us. He said, don't be a problem giver. <laughs> by not creating problems at home, but by being helpful, you're being light at home. My second big thought is recognize opportunities to solve problems. Recognize opportunities to solve problems. So I want to share a video with you. I'm going to play a video now and we'll come back and have a conversation around how this video connects with being able to recognize opportunities to solve problems. Okay, so pay attention, watch very closely, and uh, I'll be back shortly. This is where I live. I live in Kenya, at the south parts of the Nairobi National Park. Those are my dad cows at the back, and behind the cows, that's the Nairobi National Park. Nairobi National Park is not fenced in the south where I live, which means wild animals like zebras, 
migrate out of the park freely. So predators like lions follow them. And this is what they do. They kill our livestock. This one of the cows which was killed at night. And I just woke up in the, in the morning and I found it dead. And I felt so bad because it was the only bull we had. My community, the Maasai, we believe that we came from heaven with our, all our animals and all the land for hurting them. And that's why we value them so much. So I grew up hating lions so much. The Morans are the warriors who protect our community and the livestock. And they were so upset about this problem. So they killed the lions. It's one of the six lands which are killed in Nairobi. And I think this is why the Nairobi National Park lands are few. So a boy from six to nine years old in my community is responsible for his dad cows. And that's the same, same thing which happened to me. So I had to find a way of solving this problem. And the first idea I got was to use fire because I thought lions was scared of fire. But I came to realize that that didn't really ha help because it was even helping the lens to see, to see through the cow shed. So I didn't give up. I continued. And the second idea I got was to use a scarecrow. I was trying to trick the lens that I was standing near the cow shed. But lions are very clever. They will come the first day, and they see the scarecrow, and they go back. But the second day, they'll come and they say, this thing is not moving here, it's always here. <laughs> so <laughs> he jumps in and kills the animals. So one night, I was walking around the cow shed with a torch. And that day, the lions didn't come. And I discovered that lions were afraid of a moving light. So I had an idea. Since I was a small boy, I used to work in my room for the whole day. And I even took apart my mom's new radio. And that day, she almost killed me, but... <laughs> but I learned a lot about electronics. <laughs> so I got an old car battery, an indicator box. It's a small device found in the motorcycle. And it helps motorists when they want to turn right or left. It blinks. And I got a switch where I can switch on the lights on and off, and that's a small touch from a broken flashlight. So I set up everything. As you can see, the solar panel charges the battery, and the battery supplies the power to the small indicator box. I call it a transformer. And the indicator box makes the lights to flash. And as you can see, the bulbs face outside, because that's where the lines come from. And that's how it looks to lions when they come at night. The lights flash and trick lions that I was walking around the cow shed, but I was sleeping in my bed. <laughs> Thanks. So I set it up in my home two years ago, and since then, we have never experienced any problem with the lions. And my neighboring homes, heard about this idea. One of them was this grandmother. She had a lot of uh, an animals being killed by lions. And she asked me if I can put the lights for her. And I said, yes. So I put the lights. You can see at the back, those are the lion lights. Since now, I've set up seven bombers around my community, and they're really working. And my idea is also being used now in all over Kenya for scaring other predators like hyenas, leopards. And also, it's also being used to scare elephants away from people's farms. Because of this invention, I was lucky to get a scholarship in one of the best schools in Kenya, Brookhaus International School. And I'm really excited about this. My new school now is coming in and helping by fundraising and creating an awareness I even took back my friends to my community and we're installing the lights 
to the homes which don't have, and I'm teaching them how to put them. So one year ago, I was just a boy in the savannah grassland, hiding my father's cows, and I used to see planes flying over, and I told myself that one day I'll be there inside. So, and uh, here I am today. Uh, I got a, a chance to come by plane for my first time for TED. So, my big dream is to become an aircraft engineer and pilot when I grow up. I used to ride lions, but now because my invention is saving my father's cows and the lions, we are able to stay with the lions without any conflict. Surely, it means in my language. Thank you very much. All right. So, welcome back from Kenya. So we had that young lad, uh, Richard Turere. Sorry, okay. We had Richard share his story of social change and what he did to solve poverty. I want to tell, I want you to share with me, what, what did you learn from Richard's story? How did Richard recognize an opportunity to solve a problem? How did he start from himself? uh by leading himself which is what i, I shared as the first thing uh, and and how did richard create the change i wanted to i wanted you to show me in the chat box what did you learn from richard what did you learn from richard if you want to speak um you can also put up your digital hand and I'll give you an opportunity uh, to speak. But you can also use the chat box. I want you to share with me, what did you learn? What's the big thing you learned from Richard about creating change, about community engagement and about making a difference around you? And, and while you're processing that and sharing with me, I'll tell you what I picked from Richard. I, I love that, you see Richard, could have left that problem for his father to solve because in a way he wasn't direct, directly responsible for that problem. But I love that Richard at an early age took responsibility um, to, to help his family, to help his parents. He saw a problem, he did not shy away from it. He didn't ignore the problem, he took responsibility. That's what I learned from Richard. I see your comments now. Let me go. Uh, uh, Grace says, Richard faced a challenge and it became a stepping stone. Fantastic. That problem that Richard solved opened him up to more opportunities for greatness. So that, that's, that's so true, Grace. You never can tell where that problem that you take responsibility for can take you to. Think about it. Richard was there in Nairobi. He had never been on a plane that problem that he saw opened him up to an international stage. He went to speak in the US, he got a scholarship. So yes, it it, it, create, it, made, it became a stepping stone. Um, Simi Sola says there's a blessing in hardship. If the lion hadn't come for his cows, he wouldn't have had a big dream accomplished. Absolutely. He, he, what he found a, a solution for a problem and that solution opened up doors for him. Um, Faith says he had a thread, so he tricked his thread before he turned his thread. We can sit around acknowledging the fact without analyzing them to look for a solution. He also did not look for a permanent ending, a permanently ending the last life, but it kept you safe. Okay, okay, I, I see what you're saying. He, uh, he wasn't looking for a solution to take out all the lines. He was only looking for a solution to stop the lions from infiltrating his father's uh, cow shed. Thank you. Uh, you can do great things from small places. Yes, I love that faith. I think that that's, that's, that's a, something I've heard um, the guy from this slum, chess slums or something uh, talk about doing great things uh, from small places, absolutely. You don't need a great platform. You just need to have a heart to solve problems. Mm, fantastic. The people in this classroom are very smart and really 
you're making great contribution. Joseph says the fact that he did not allow his age determine his influence and the impact in solving the problem in the society. Uh, Yomiko says he kept on trying without giving up until he got the final solution. Absolutely, he was resilient. He kept looking for creative solutions to the problem. What if I do this? What if I do that? You see, if, we, if all we did today was to watch Richard's video, it teaches us many more things that I've shared with you, okay? Thinking about creative solutions. How can I solve this problem? This problem I'm facing at home, this problem I'm unhappy about in my environment. What are the possible solutions? Thank you. Um, you never stop trying to find a solution, absolutely. So there are lots of things we can pick from Richard and I like the powerful lessons that we have pulled out from that story. Okay, so let me end my presentation uh, in one minute. Let me, let me bring this presentation to an end. The last thing, my last big thought on creating positive change uh, would be that you need to influence others positively. You need to influence others positively. Uh, and, and what do I mean by that? I, I mean that you can be the change. There are many things you can do. There are many initiatives you can set up even as, um, even regardless of how old you are right now, you can start up a cleaning initiative to beautify the your streets, the parks around you, public spaces. You can start a mental health awareness program um, in your school to promote mental health, uh, reduce the stigma that people face and offer resources for those struggling with mental uh, issues. Uh, you can start a mentoring and tutoring program for your friends that are struggling with their academics to support them, to offer career advice and personal development. You can set up food drives. Have you seen people in your environment who don't have what to eat, who are always begging? Um, have you seen that sometimes when you're driving to school, there are people that come to your windscreen asking for money. You can set up a food drive for them to collect non-perishable foods from those who have and creates like a food bank for those who don't have. Um, environmental conservation projects are big now because of climate change. Uh, so you can start an initiative like tree planting, creating a garden, organizing campaigns to reduce uh, single use plastics and just to promote uh, sustainable living. Uh, you can also have a fundraising event for uh, maybe an NGO, or a motherless, um, an orphanage, or for a course. Uh, you can organize a digital literacy workshop for those who may need it. I mean, there are lots of things you can do to start influencing others positively. So here are my final thoughts. Number one, you're not too young to make a difference. You're not too young, like Richard. Uh, number two, transformation starts from one person's good action. Whatever change we see in our world today started because one person took action. Many people can talk about it. Many people can argue about it. Many people can analyze it. But change starts when one person takes action. And I'm challenging you this evening to be the one person that takes action. Number three, volunteer. Be part. You don't have to start your own initiative you can support someone's initiative. Someone is already doing something great, you can be part of it, you can volunteer. Your parents are already on organizing an initiative that is helpful, you, uh, you can volunteer, you can just go and serve. I know your summer break is almost over, but this is a great time to be part of something. Um, I, I love to see teenagers in my church serve with the junior church, that's, those who are younger. So sometimes they're just there helping to tag the younger ones as they come into church. And I love the sight of that because even though they are teenagers, they are helping, they are adding value. So volunteer, okay? Um, when you have spare time, don't use all your spare time only for yourself and for your TV. Give some of that time to serve others. And before, start small. I know you have a grand plan to change the entire world but start small. Start by changing 
your home, start by being salt and light at home. And as you do that, you will have greater opportunities like Richard to do greater things. And finally, the change you want to see starts with you. The change you want to see starts with you. All right, so that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope that you were able to pick something. I want you to tell me in the chat box, what's the one thing you were able to take away from my presentation this evening? What's the one learning point for you? And what's, what's the one thing you're going to start doing uh, because you have listened or because you are, <clears throat> excuse me, because you were on the call this evening? What's the one thing you're taking away? I want you to drop it in the chat box. And whilst you're doing that, I would hand over back to uh, Uncle Ayo. Thank you so much for listening. Wow, wow. Okay, let me just allow the chat to be going on. Please keep the chat coming. Say something like the change starts with you. Sorry. I said I'm saying something like the change starts with you. Okay, so the change starts with me. I'm trying to also keep up with the messages. I think I'll just show them. Um wow, wow, wow. Change yourself before trying to change others. Change yourself before trying to change others. Man, there's a lot. There's a lot. Okay, so whilst you are also writing what you what you've learned, can you also uh, type your questions? Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Gwenga is seeing all of this. Oh yes, this is beautiful. I've also learned. I've learned. You know, um, as simple as cleaning your room, like he said. You know, being active in the house before you can change the society. You know, you said something about change yourself first before you change the society. That's that's very key for me. Never stop to find solutions. Can I keep up with all of these messages? This is beautiful. I learned that Richard, I learned to be a problem solver and to put others before me. Hmm. Be a problem solver. Ah, wow. I would like to start from small or from the thing and people around me. Be determined. See responses? Wow. Uh, change starts with me. I should focus on myself and being the salt and light to my family. There are also different ways to be involved, like volunteering. But I learned that Richard was wicked because he really wanted to tackle the problem. He could have created a solution to solve, uh, to solve the problem, not only for him, but for others. But nevertheless, Richard tried and wanted to be like Richard. Mm -hmm. Okay, I learned to be problem solver and to put others before me. Never stop to find solution. Be a problem solver. Is it? See, please, can you post all of this even on your on your statuses? You know, social media handles. After this class, just put the things that you have learned. Then you put TLIC thing since leadership intelligence course twenty twenty four. Benga Samba. So you can put his name. You know, the things you've learned. This is good. This is good. This is good. All right. So um, at this point, please let your questions come in so that, um, please, I want to believe that you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? If there's a problem, don't wait for, oh, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. If there's a problem, I'm just reading the chat I, because I wanted your chat to come in earlier. If there's a problem, don't wait for anyone else to bring solution to the problem. You may just be the person they two are waiting for. Ah, who said? Faith. 
So you took that out. Wow. I can't wait to see your faces eventually, all of you. You know, these responses are just mind blowing. Okay, so somebody is asking a question. So I think at this point, let me see. Um, so that he will be able to unmute. Okay, um, somebody is asking a question and I want to read it out. He says, sir, what if you have an initiative but no one is sponsoring or support supporting you? It can be something sometimes discouraging. Oh, that, 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 that's a good question. I, I want you to I want to encourage you to start with initiatives that would not even cost anything. Okay, start. Remember, I said start small. In my final thoughts and final slide, I said start small. So don't wait for an initiative that would cost money. Start with what would not even cost any money. And there are many things you can do that would not even cost you money. Remember, I said start by leading yourself, start from your home, start by making a change at home. And in doing that, there are a lot of things you can do that you don't need money for. You don't need money to help your parents. You don't need money to uh, be more supportive at home. Sorry, you don't also need money to volunteer. Some of us want to, you want to start your own grand initiative and be the founder, be the, the spotlight is on you. All of those things are great, but it's progressive. Before you start that grand plan, go and volunteer somewhere, be part of someone's project, be part of what's happening already in your environment. And as you do that, what you're doing is that you're building credibility, you're building credibility. When you become credible, when people can trust you with what you've done previously, then when you eventually want to start your own plan, uh, you, you'll see that people are willing to support you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, somebody is also still asking. He says, "Sir, what if you are lending help and did not show interest in you?" Okay, did you get that, sir? Uh, no, no, I didn't. What if you are lending help? Uh, that that question is not clear. Yeah, I'm guessing maybe the person is saying you are lending. Uh, help, but then they are still not showing interest in you. You know, people that you are helping or the leaders or people who should show who should sponsor. Uh, please, can you be clearer with the question? I hope that's what you're trying to ask. Ajibola. Okay, okay if, if that's the yes. question. He said yes. Okay, if that's the question, I do encourage you to stay consistent. Um, because yes, if people around you now are not showing interest, if you stay consistent in adding value, in creating a change in your environment, guess what? Someone else is going to find you. Someone else is going to support you. So don't give up. Uh, if the people around you today do not recognize what you're doing, keep doing it and no, don't do it for recognition. Do it because you want to add value, but as you stay faithful to it, I can assure you that over time, um, you'll find people who will be interested in what you're doing. Okay, sir, there's a question here, but the person directed, he sent me a private message, but I won't mention your name. <laughs> he says, sir, I would just like to know for myself, what distinguishes an ant from a lion in leadership? And that's a profound one. So you, you can't be for yourself. Everybody must know the answer. Go ahead, sir. Oh, there, there are many things that differentiate the ants from the lion. Uh, and like I said, in, in that quiz that I gave at the beginning, there are no wrong answers. I, I, we can learn from all the animal types. But but I think the key thing for me uh, is the how strong. The ants are very small, yet very strong. Um, the ants are also very organized in terms of the ants colony and how they are able to delegate tasks to different um, to, to the different types of ants that you have and how they together, how they work in unity. Somebody said that to achieve um, their giving goals and tasks. Yes, the lion is the king of the jungle, like we like to say. The lion, of course, 
you 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 talk about the courage, the boldness, the strengths, uh, and and all of that. Uh, but I think that the, the ants also stand out in their own way. So they are different. The lion would be on the uh, area of strength. It would be in the area of courage. It would be in the area of um, the audacity. Uh, that's when we talk of the, the lion. But I, I think when you look at the leadership skills of delegating, organizing, um, wisdom, lots of wisdom from the ants. Even the Bible says we should learn from the ants. Then there are a lot of things we can pick from the ants. Thank you so much, sir. It has been an interesting session and I've enjoyed every bit of it. Yesterday was a wow. This is another wow. Please, did you enjoy it? Can you please help me to say thank you to Pastor Samuel Benga? Please, can you help me? The German man. <laughs> I think I've heard that story before that you're a German. I don't know how I just forgot. And whilst you were showing your picture, me too, I was looking keenly. The person I thought you were was not the one you were. But, so I failed it, so I didn't get you. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Benga, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for um, being able to join and making our time at a time like this. We really appreciate you. See the love in the chat box. She said the love in the chat box. Thank you so much. And then we hope that when we call again, yes. Yes, everybody, they said they really enjoyed the class. I enjoyed the class too. You know, we also try to make this available on YouTube for those who might want to watch again. And uh, for, um, for as well as, you know, so that before you write your YouTube test concerning this. Um, Pastor Benga, I don't know if you would like to tell them, those who might want to follow you on social media, um, your Andu on social media, on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and the likes, those who might be there. We like to share. I'll just put it in the chat box. Uh, Benga speaks. Uh, and then my work with teenagers, I do have a page for teenagers called at uh, Teens Impact. Yeah, so it's in the chat box. Thank you. Okay, so you can see Teens Impact. If you'd like to join the community, you'd like to uh, follow Mr. Tash Samar Benga, uh, please, you can reach out to him. You know, social media. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Uh, so everyone, thank you. Please stay tuned on the group. We will keep you updated concerning the next class. It's been a beautiful session. I enjoy every day. Sometimes, you know, when you enjoy a class, you don't know time is gone, you know. And honestly, all of you, you've made this class very interesting with because I'm also learning from you through your feedback, you know, with what you are saying and your responses. You've made the class very lively. Um, and I'm we're also taking note of those who have been very consistent and also uh, very inter um, engaging in the class. Keep it up. And I want to say, see you all in the next class. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. See ya. Good night.